Hi, I'm Shannon Smith, and this is my coaching model presentation. Um, in this presentation, I'll be going over uh, my own personal coaching style, as well as comparing and contrasting two different coaches that I look up to. Um, they're actually pretty much opposite coaching styles, but um, we can learn a lot from looking at their own different ways they coach. Um, and then I'm going to do a workshop that where you can learn and go over your own personal coaching style and ways you can incorporate that into your teaching and coaching. Um, so my, for my teaching plan, uh, my own definition of leadership is setting a good and ethical example to a group of people uh, where they can develop positively and in a positive environment as well. Um, my goal for coaching is to be a transformational leader, um, which is, uh, I have the definition here, but I not only want to teach my athletes the skills that are involved in my sport, um, but also teach them skills in life as well, um, how to create goals and create a team culture within everyone in the team, and so values and trust, and as well as how to motivate uh, my athletes. Um, so my approaches for my coaching, uh, every year or every season I'll be having team meetings to go over everything for the upcoming season. Um, the meetings will be not only with my athletes but also with the parents as well as the staff. Um, I think first impressions are very important uh, in these meetings and in the first few practices I will make it important to give off a very good impression, um, showing my own personality into my coaching style. Um, and what I, my goals for teaching my athletes are that winning is not always important, uh, not the most important thing. Uh, creating goals and reaching those individual goals are the most important thing. Uh, and making sure that everyone knows that each person has different goals of different levels that they need to reach. Um, in gymnastics, there have been a lot of issues with health, whether that's psychologically or um, physical problems such as injuries and a lot of problems with anorexia. And I want to make sure my athletes are taught uh, correct nutrition as well as working out uh, outside of practices and how to take care of themselves. Um, and most importantly, having fun. Uh, in gymnastics, you see a lot of burnouts uh, from kids uh, too many hours during the week, not having fun with it anymore. Um, I have a quote here. It says, the most important thing to carry with you is your attitude. Uh, I think this is very important uh, because the way you bring on your attitude will reflect and go off onto other people and that's, that will make it an easier learning environment for everyone. So my coaching style uh, is cooperative. There's three different coaching styles. There's commander, cooperative, and submissive. Uh, commander is more of a militaristic approach. It's very uh, controlling over your athletes. You make all the decisions. Athletes make no decisions. Uh, cooperative is a mix of submissive and commander. It is uh, right there in the word, cooperating with each other. You each make decisions within the team. Uh, like rules and just communication in general and submissive would be the coach makes absolutely no decisions. Uh, the athletes are kind of on their own. Um, I think cooperative is the best style because uh, it gives the chance for students to students and athletes to uh, make decisions and help the team environment. I think if the coach is too controlling and or not enough controlling over a team, then that's when things go out of hand and when athletes don't have fun anymore and it makes them makes a hard learning environment. So my objectives for uh, this presentation is to discuss different coaches and kind of compare and contrast their styles, um, go over what can be learned from these different styles from each coach and how to apply them into my own as well as your own uh, coaching style and your philosophies. Um, for my teaching methods evaluation, uh, the first coach I have is uh, Bella Caroli. 
He is one of my favorite gymnastics coaches. I've watched him on TV for years with the Olympic team. Um, right here I have, he has produced 28 Olympians, 15 world championships, uh, 12 European medalists, six national championships, all in 30 years. He's very, very successful. And obviously he's doing something right if he's so successful and it's important to look over his style. He's very uh, calm. So it's a very submissive, cooperative style, not commanding at all. Um, in this video I have here, you can pause it and watch it, or at the end you can watch it. It's a very famous video of Carrie Shrug on her last event, vault, um, at the Olympics. And her first vault, she injures her foot, and she tried walking it off, and she had to do another vault to make it and win for the team to win the Olympics. Um, and usually coaches during an injury, they'll tend to freak out and panic and uh, go to their athletes and see what's going on. But he just stands there and he says, all he says is you can win. So it's very calming, um, kind of calmed. You can see it calms Carrie down as well, even though she's in a lot of pain. But clearly he was successful and she was successful and they ended up winning. Um, I think this is important to look at. Um, the, the motivation is still there, even though it is very calm. Um, I want to go over the negatives of him as well. Um, a few years ago, recently, there was a scandal going on with him and his wife being sued uh, because one of their past Olympians um, was sexually abused by the physician, the Olympic physician. and they had heard about it and they kind of turned blind eye as it says right there um, and I think this is very important to learn from because I think every coach should make it important to have their own ethical philosophies and um, know what to do in situations like this and for the safety of the gymnast and for them and everyone involved uh, they need to report it um, so I in my own learning from this I've created my own philosophies and made a um, basically a list of what to do in these situations and I think that's very important in sport. Um, my next coach is Yin Alvarez. He's Danelle Yeva's coach. Uh, he's another Olympian. Um, Danelle's very successful. He has many uh, world, national, and Olympic medals. Um, so in this video that I have here of Yin, He's very, very energetic and motivating. I love watching him. That's why I picked him to go over. Um, you can see in the beginning, he's very in Danelle's face. He grabs his face. That's kind of his approach of um, teaching Danelle and uh, motivating him, like saying keywords in the beginning of what he needs to do to be successful, as well as at the end, you can see him jumping up and down, running around, clapping. He goes up to him and hugs him. And I kind of look at that as his like reward, is his reaction to how well he does. And it's kind of like positive reinforcement is really key there. Um, and what I've learned from him, watching him is, um, it's okay to be proud and be happy and be yourself uh, in your coaching. And that's kind of his personality is very like bubbly and energetic. And being yourself in coaching is very important and you don't always have to be a coach and uh, superior. You can be yourself as well and incorporate that in. <clears throat> so for communication in gymnastics actually it is very, uh, it's different than other sports because you can't talk during a routine. So that's why it's actually kind of hard to exactly see what a coach is like if you're not watching them in practice because it's not like basketball or football where you can yell during the game and like say what to do you can't say anything during the routine um but kind of before and after you can see what kind of keywords coaches use and their personalities and coaching style um such as yin before and after he's very energetic motivating bella uh in between the carry shrugs vault he is very calm and just says, you can win. Uh, I really like that quote. Um, but it's something to learn from, different communication uh, techniques. 
So on this slide, you can pause it after I go over it. Um, it's a workshop. Uh, so you can learn uh, from the coaches the positives and negatives from each uh, positives, their styles, their successes, as well as the negatives uh, like Bella and the scandals. You can write down what you've learned. Then you can think of your own personal coaching style, write that down, whether what you think is best for your personality and your athletes, uh, which will make the most success in your team. Then you can develop your own philosophy. I think this is very important to incorporate with your own style. Uh, ways to incorporate into your coaching, um, whether that's being calm during practices as well as uh, competition as well or being very controlling, whichever you think is best. Everyone's different. Um, and then you can make a plan uh, with your athletes and rules. If you're cooperative, um, there's, there will be a balance between them. If you're a commander, you have to develop your own set of rules. Submissive, the athletes will make the rules. Um, you can write those down as well. And you can pause it here and go over it. <coughs> So learning objectives through this whole thing. Uh, so we have the how, what, and why. How it would be incorporating your own style. So that'd be figuring it out um, and how to um, pretty much put that in to practices as well as competition. Um, what you think is most important in a relationship with your coaches and athletes. Um, I think this is very important personally to develop a relationship between you and your athletes. Um, as a gymnast myself, I had very close relationships with all of my coaches, and even today, I look, I still look up to my, all my coaches, even though I really don't talk to them anymore. But they'll always be kind of like a role model in my life, and I think that's very important. Um, and then why? What you think will be best for success? Which style you think will be best, um, and will bring the most success within your team? and your athletes, which will work more. Um, it also sometimes might be okay to uh, develop, figure out your style once you know your athletes, um, but you also don't want to go against your own personality as well and what you would want to do. Um, then learning outcomes, once you figure out all these things, all the um, objectives, uh, you have your how, how you're gonna make it clear uh, your style into practices and competition and sort of stay c consistent um, maybe kind of confusing for athletes if you're one day you're really controlling and being very hard on them the next day you're like oh do whatever you want um, I think that's very important um, your what your what's your style basically um, figure that out uh, through your outcome and best way to incorporate it as well and then why your style, um, why you're using your own style, why that may be important, and uh, how the athletes will learn. And then for this whole presentation, for review, we compared and contrast two different coaches. Um, we learned a lot through their different styles, through commander submissive, and or cooperative and submissive, and cooperative and very energetic, uh, kind of two different styles there. Um, how to develop your own style and uh, also reviewed my own style as well. Um, I will incorporate that into my e-portfolio through um, all my team management, my philosophy, and just uh, making a statement of my uh, coaching style and how I incorporate that. Um, and then why all of this is important. Um, I think it is important to recognize your style and stick with it because it will bring the most success for your team um, and your athletes. Um, that's pretty much it and I uh, hope you learned from this and thank you very much.